Hello viewers, welcome to Revelations. Here we delve into the lives of the youth. What they go through, what they encounter, what they experience. We talk to them and then we dissect into the issue and give them hope in Christ. Today we have with us here our own brother, the son of the soil, Kewa, on the show. Keep watching, we will be right back. Welcome to Revelations. Ah, thank you. Hope the Lord has been good to you. Always good, and His mercies endure it forever. We bless Jesus. Mm. Today we are going to talk about everything about your life, what you've gone through, how far <laughs> God has brought you. The viewers want to hear about your story and your wow. revelations. Wow, that's awesome. We yeah. want to know. As a sound engineer who managed musicians, where you started from, where you fall, where you, you where you encounter issues, demonic and godly, and whatever you've gone through and how far God has brought you. We want to know everything about your life and your gift. All right. First thing is I'll let you know that I am of course, my name is David Kojoche, but everybody calls me Kewa. You can call me highly spiritual. Uh, my life, it has been a very wonderful journey. I'm still enjoying my life. It's a beautiful journey. I believe that uh, God has brought me to this place for a purpose. And a purpose is for his name and his glory to be seen. Hallelujah. And his power to be recognized. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. So, uh, when I was little, from I started, I was me. I was born into the church. All right, I was born uh, at the age of six. I was playing drums in the church, Pentecost Church, uh, and I played drums. Migrated to playing the keyboards, playing guitars, playing all manner of instruments. Teaching music in church directing choirs in church. I majored in drums, so I was a drummer, major drummer in church, till I went into all the stages I'm talking about. So your profession is a gift? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a gift. Yes. I mean, God, God released it for a purpose. That's what I'm saying. God bless God. So I have been, I've been like this, and I have not changed. Uh, I believe that my life has blessed other lives. My life... Uh, that's why I keep on saying that I'm, I'm on the journey. There's a purpose for what God is always doing with us. And I believe that if you are created and you who is existing is not affecting life, there's a, there's a question mark somewhere. You're not created to have all the fun and have all the enjoy life and then later on die and go and nothing. All God by will ask yourself. You. Yes, yes, yes. You were created to affect lives. That is why the assignment of Jesus was to affect lives. So, if you are not affecting lives, you are, there's a question mark. So, basically, that's, that's my life. And we are still affecting lives. Okay. We believe people that at the end of the day. You, people mm -hmm. look at you and think you've not gone through any rough path. What do you have to say? Have you been into oh. anything rough, difficult, that got you confused? Uh, well, everybody has gone through an issue one, one way or the other. Tough times, painful times. But, you see, it is part of the journey. I always say that the proof of the presence of God is not the absence of problems. People and most men of God have been lying to people. Been, once you come to Jesus, all problems are over. Mm -hmm. Be I okay? Debbie, Debbie. I'll say, once you become a believer, many are the afflictions of the righteous. righteous but, Jehovah God but the delivers. Lord delivered them out of them mm, all. Yes. 
Romans chapter 8, verse 18. It says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time cannot be compared mm -hmm. to the glory mm -hmm. that will be revealed mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. It says, For we know that all things work together that for, for good, good for, for them that love the Lord and are called according to his mm. purpose. You will go through trial times. Jesus went through trial times. Anybody who has made a mark in life, check, they all went through trial times. So it's inevitable. You have to go through it. It's a path you will take. So all you need to do as a person is to turn the lemons into lemonades. That's all. We bless God. Uh, once once, once you, you have the capacity and the power that dwelleth on your inside. Was that at the point in time you gave up? Have you given up anything in your life? No, before? no, no. Even in my music production, I never give up. Even in my what I do as a, a secular job. I have never given up on that. How much more doing the things of God? No. You, I am, if you like, I'm the most criticized man of God on earth. I can, say, I can say that with a fact. Of a fact. Because a lot of people think that you cannot be doing secular stuff. Secular stuff and then uh, uh, do, do what you do as a man of God. Unfortunately, it's not true. At that point, I asked you this question. The people you manage, can you mention a few? Oh, I've managed a f I've, uh, Well, I don't manage. I have a record label. I have yes. managers. I own a company. Yes. You, in those you have in your company okay, or good. on so, your labels. Yes. Can you I, have, I, I, a few? I own a record label. I have managers and acts on the label. I have Mr. Drew. I have Creamy right now. And there's another surprise that is coming up. I cannot share Those it now. who are doing secular music. Secular music, yes. So, you as a pastor and managing people who are doing secular no, music. Me as a man of God. As a man of God. Who has a company. A company that manages uh, the secular it's, it's, uh, music. It's simple. It's like you um, who have a company, perhaps you have a company that not only believers come in, unbelievers are there. I sell pepper and everybody buys pepper. Thank you very much. So, there's, there's you see, that's what I'm saying that. You cannot walk into the barber shop and begin to ask the barber, are you a Christian, are you a Christian? before you if can touch rain my Even rain doesn't fall on only Christians. Thank you stuff. very much. But do you think doing secular music is, is, is evil? Or what, is, so let me explain something to you. And I believe that it will be a very great education for anybody who wants to get it. Oh, those who are There's secular us. and there's worldly. There's a strong difference, vast difference between secular and worldly secular is something which is done outside of gospel or religion okay so you can be a pastor you have a secular job as a lawyer you defend all the thieves even though even though you know he's a thief but your job is to defend you don't want to lose a case we have doctors guys we have I mean, we have pastors who are police officers and all that. You, we even have Christians who are market women. Yes, yes, you yes. Buy, you buy stuff for two CDs and sell it at 25 Exactly. Years. So, there's nothing wrong with doing anything secular. Mm -hmm. There's everything wrong in doing something which is worldly. Because worldly is not something that the Lord is permitting us to go into. Let me give you examples of worldly. If you are a musician and all you do is you promote or you promote sexual stuff, it is against the statutes of Jesus. How do we know this is a Good. sexual so stuff? So everything you do, so just like you sell pepper, in your selling pepper, you decide that, okay, I have to start dressing some way to attract people to come and buy my pepper. That is when you are, you are attaching worldly stuff to selling your pepper. Mm -hmm. So you can do, there's a decent way of doing everything. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. So there are a lot of love songs right now that are blessing marriages. I was, I was coming to that. Yes. I was coming to ask that even those who are doing godly stuff, they still need our attention. They are the reason we've I'm been telling called. You, I'm telling you. And I'll make a very strong statement. Gospel. What is gospel? 
gospel music is music that a hundred percent speaks about the life, death, resurrection of Christ and what it has done for mankind. Mm -hmm. I don't want to mention some songs. Mm, don't mention. You uh, just tell us. We know. So, to tell you, other songs cannot be gospel music. Mm -hmm. We have Christian music. Mm -hmm. You cannot say Christian music is gospel music. For lack of knowledge, my people, people perish. perish. People don't differentiate there. There are a lot of people who say they are gospel musicians who are not gospel musicians. You are saying something here. Yeah, it's yeah, a yeah, revelation. Yeah, yeah. You said Christian song and then the, we have christian music that is why us. that is why we have christmas music mm -hmm. is it a gospel song mm -hmm. no it's not mm -hmm. it's not no christmas music talks about christ uh if anything when he was born mm -hmm. it cannot be a gospel music it's christmas music there's there's liturgical music the one that roman catholics and they do uh, was anglicans do um, when uh, they are doing their mass and stuff that cannot be gospel music likewise people who preach the word if you are preaching the word and your word doesn't revolve around christ you cannot be called a man of god who is preaching christ so how do you know this man of god's word is revolving by their christ? fruit by what cometh out of their mouth me i identify you with what you say if you're not speaking right, I know. Let's not talk prophetic. Prophetic is one area. I don't want to even go there. If you're not speaking right, I can decode who you are. You understand? That is what I'm saying that... Let me even come into prophetic now. There are a lot of prophets right now who after the death of Jesus Christ, who has come to uncover the true purpose of the area called prophetic, are still prophesying like the old. You need to explain Let me give that. you a revelation. Mm -hmm. When you read Matthew 11, 11, I'm not too sure, um, but Jesus called John the Baptist the greatest amongst all men born of a woman. But the least in the kingdom is greater than John the Baptist. He called John the Baptist the greatest in the kingdom the greatest amongst all men sorry born of a woman but the least jesus is no it's not me this mm -hmm. is jesus but mm -hmm. the least in the kingdom is greater than he john the baptist do you understand that yes this is the meaning john the baptist was the only one jesus met pharisees he met sadducees he met all people from all walks of life they couldn't look at him and decode who he was yes. But when John the Baptist saw him, he said, Behold the Lamb of, of the God world. that taketh away the sin, sin of, of the, the world. world. So the very presence of Jesus on earth was not to give you food to eat. That's where we are getting it wrong. That's why people are saying, When you come to church, I'll give you a house. When you come to church, Jesus will give you a house. No. Before Jesus came, people had houses. People were rich. So Jesus couldn't have come to bring people to a place where they will become rich. No. Before Jesus came, people were enjoying life. He didn't come to give you a, a better life, to enjoy life. No. Jesus came to do something that mankind couldn't do easily. That is to erase the path of sin. Yes, he died for us to have life. Good. So John the Baptist saw Jesus and said, Behold the Lamb of God. Good. That would take, who is here to take away the you sin of the world? Jesus is God. God all by himself. He left his throne. Came. And let me explain that. A lot of people are saying that Jesus is not God. So people don't read the word. When you read the word, you know that Jesus is God in man. God in flesh. The Bible says, Isaiah the chapter, to Thank you. Also. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Favorite scripture here in Isaiah can you so I For unto us a child is born, unto us son a son is, is giving, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Jesus. Counselor, Mighty God. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. His name shall be called Mighty God. So Jesus is God, not only God, but a mighty God. 
Philippians chapter 2, verse 11, the Bible says, Wherefore God also has highly exalted him and mm -hmm, given him mm -hmm, a name mm -hmm. that is greater than every name. Listen to me. After Jesus came and he died for mankind, the practice of leaving his throne to come and die for mankind, God said, now I'll give you a name that is greater than every other name. Before Jesus went on the cross, his name was called Jesus. Mm. Yes. So the name was Before not... Before he was even born, thank he you, was called Jesus. Jesus. So the name was not actually Jesus. God gave him a name that is greater than every name. Other now, name. Let, me, let me shock you. Greater than every other name. That are the name Jesus. Every knee must bow. Every knee. Of things in heaven. Listen to this clearly. Of things on earth. Of things under the earth. Every, every. Name. So of things in heaven. What dwells in heaven? Everything that is in heaven must bow at the name Jesus. This is where people are afraid to say. The name God and the name Jesus. God elevated Jesus', Jesus name beyond. above his name. So all falling angels who are in the heavens are not greater than the name Jesus. Okay, so okay, well, let me ask Let me finish. I'll show you something okay. for... To bring it down to even the sickness and disease that is torturing our nation right now. Corona. There's a demon behind it. It is not bigger than the name Jesus. I'm coming to where I said that Jesus, uh, Jesus was saying John the Baptist was the greatest and who you are in Christ. So after... Jesus said, John the Baptist is the greatest. But, he said, but the least in the kingdom is greater than John the Baptist. That is Jesus. So anybody who comes after Jesus has come into the kingdom of God. When you pursue the statues and the plan of Jesus, you have entered into his kingdom. Mm -hmm. Now you are greater than John the Baptist. That's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. he said, Even the least in the kingdom of God is greater than John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. You are now greater than Elijah. Mm -hmm. You know why? You are greater than Elijah because of who you are and who dwelleth on your inside. First John chapter because 4 you verse are 4. Jesus. Or say, greater is he that lives in you than mm -hmm. he that lives mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. Christ in you, the hope of glory. glory. So, dear two mono, as you see your own. Yes, and a Bible So you are bigger and stronger. So when you so today's prophet, now coming to the prophetic mm -hmm. uh, question. Today's prophet now doesn't have to, he has no power to prophesy in the name or prophesy like Elijah. You cannot prophesy like Elijah. They're all below you now because Christ, now you are moving into another dimension called Christ. So you prophesying to a child of God is like prophesying to what is bigger than you. Good. So when you are prophesying, be careful because most people are prophesying and they say, I will kill you. Jesus never prophesied and said, I'll kill you. But do you believe in prophecy? I am a prophet. Why would I believe in prophecy? So, how do you differentiate the one that you would receive or the one that will give you prophecy that will not be giving prophecy to something that is bigger than him, the prophet? I'll give you this. The Bible says in Joel that in the last days, I will pour out, and this is where many men of God also get it wrong. Mm -hmm. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit. When it comes to the last days, this is what I, the Lord, will do. I will pour out my spirit mm -hmm. on all flesh, not some flesh. Mm -hmm. All flesh. All flesh. Now listen. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Old men will dream dreams. Old women will also dream dreams. Your young ones. He says, even your maid servant will prophesy. So, yes, the gift of prophecy is for all. Yes, there are some people who have been set apart in the prophetic office. But what spirit do they prophesy with? They prophesy with the same spirit of God. So, the prophet who is in an office, even though he has been elevated into an office. He carries the same spirit as you who is not a prophet in that dimension carries. But prophecy is speaking. So when you read uh, 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 Second Chronicles 20:20, 20, 20, believe in the Lord your God, you will be you will be established. Sorry. And believe in the prophet, and, and you shall will prosper. prosper. 
So he says, believe in his prophets, you will prosper. What the Bible then is actually saying is that believe in prophetic. The prophecy is what comes out of your mouth. Speaking, declaring. When you encounter problems, declare, speak. So that makes you a prophet. You are prophesying. You are speaking. So, All right, so believe so in your word. Speak positively. Make not me negatively. understand this part. Mm -hmm. So in this, at this point, you are saying that a prophet cannot be called into an office of a prophet apart from the prophecies, the spirit of prophecy that is being that is no, given No, I'm not saying all. that. I'm not saying. What mm -hmm. I'm saying is that mm -hmm. there are some people who are brought into the office of a prophet. Mm -hmm. But generally, once you are in Christ, there is a spirit and a power of God that comes upon you to prophesy. Mm -hmm. To look at things and make declarations. And uh, The Bible says that it is he that calleth into existence things that are not as though they were. Mm -hmm. That's God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who is God to you? He's your father. Mm -hmm. He dwelleth on your inside and on yes, by virtue of the fact that you're in right. Jesus. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you have to begin to call into existence things that are not there. as though they were. And because God dwells in you, it will... Exactly. So that is who you are. I want to get the problem this of the uh, Before you go on, the problem of the believer today is that we don't have a good identity. We are forgotten oh, our yeah. identity. It's identity crisis. Okay. So, do you have a church of your own now? I, see, that's where the problem is. That's, where, that's why uh, many men of God now feel superior over man. Yes, I pastor a church, mm -hmm. but I don't own the church. You pastor a church. You Called have Destiny. disciples. Uh, no, hold on. I pastor a church. I don't own a church. A church is for God. The church, and every church that is put together is for God. It's the, it's the, the purpose for that gathering is to bring people there into his kingdom. To fuel, to give them fuel, to feed them. There are some you'll be feeding with milk. There are some you'll be feeding with hard food, bones. But that is a feeding place for people to go out there. So, when you become a believer, you have to begin to pursue the statues of Christ. What did Jesus do? When he came, he said, I am after my father's business. His mother and his father were looking for him. Where have you been? Say, hey, why are you looking for me? I am about my father's business. The question I want to mm -hmm. ask is that do you have um, disciples. Mm -hmm. Your disciples, if someone decides to do this sexual music, what do you have to tell that person? No, well, see, per what I teach in our church, there's no way. Because you see, what we will feed you with, you will rise up to the task. But you believe and know that even Joshua, who was a great prophet, was deceived at a point in time. So no matter how you groom them, where no, there you is see, peace, that's what I'm saying. That you cannot have Jesus right know jesus right and be deceived and be deceived so those who are being deceived i'll, I'll give you a, a typical example you made an example can I, me i always love the scripture you connected it to joshua all right i and i'm telling you that the dispensation we are in now we are in the dispensation of the sons of god those of us who are walking in christ mm -hmm. so in our dispensation what we carry is bigger than joshua Okay. So, I, I understand that you are saying that the way you groom them, nobody can deceive them. Mm -hmm. So, I'm asking you, we are in Ghana. You watch TV. You've seen internet. You've heard things. People who are even in church, they will tell you, we've heard a story here today, a person who is being deceived in church. When you listen to his case, it's a genuine case. Why, so, why, how was he deceived in church? He was working there. He was working in church as uh, an organist. Musician in church. Uh, yes, musician in church. They, he was told they would pay him. It got to a point they were not paying him. He was there. Now he's in crisis. He's suffering diabetes and all that. It was just today we heard that story. So are you, you saying you know, you that know why, you know why, they have Christ? No, no, no. You know why he totally is wrong? Let me tell you why. When you play in church, now, 
back in the days, the Levites were fed with the monies that came or the whatever offering. the offerings that came. Yes. And the titans. Good. But he didn't receive it. Okay. One way or the other, he was deceived. Bible says that cursed be any man who puts your trust in man and your hope in man. When now you see that that is the tangent it is going and you depend on it and you're saying that the man of God says he will give me money, he has not given me money, I, I'm tired I, I, and I'm still there. Why are you still there if that's what you're depending on? Make a decision to move on if all you want is to be paid in church. You need to go to where they will pay you and pay you well. If that is what you want, follow that. You Do you what I'm pay saying? people at your place? Yes. You pay I, them. I am, I am a musician who value musicians. So in my church, I pay the musicians. Not say, it's, it's even bad to say you pay them. They are the musicians. You bless them. No, no, I'm telling you. The area of the musician, the area of a praise and worship leader, the keyboard player, the drummer, you don't play with. The same way you stand on a pulpit and you preach, they preach when they are playing. So you have to make them comfortable, not paying them alone to go home. But sometimes, look at their welfare. How are they faring? You said this guy has diabetes and he's in the church and the church is not thinking about him because he has diabetes. It's dangerous. You understand what I'm saying? So the place of the church is also to take care of people. We are with Kewa here. Oh, can't me. Jimmy, this is our share. You ain't mean chasu se siya because you aye de. That's in there. Se nyango po ma ya ukaya. Ye be sign atwa su mi Kewa. Ye da watu se ushe ye. That's in there. Same time we will meet with you. This is Revelation. My name is Mami Grace. Follow all our social media platforms. Bring all your views and comments. Jerome 2020 is Instagram, Facebook is Mami Grace, YouTube is Mami Grace. Subscribe to it. Leave your DMs, your comments, and all. We will touch base with you. God bless us all. See you next week, same time.